All right, welcome to the Smoke and Mirrors podcast, your destination for the latest in movie news and reviews. We are your hosts, Rob, Dave, and Triz. So tonight, we bring you the reviews of Brand Bollywood Down Under by the humble Anupam Sharma, and also David Finch's Netflix venture, The Killer. With these brands coming down under, do they pass the test? Let's hope we can sleep with both eyes open tonight. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and now let's start the show. And Bollywood, man. Let's talk oh, about it. Let's get into it. So, Bram Bollywood, man. This was unbelievable for me. So, <clears throat> from the title, you think that it's just all about Bollywood film and the introduction to Down Under or Australia. Um, but this gives you a full historic rundown of the creation of Bollywood film, why it's called Bollywood, why Bollywood is so entertaining and it's not very dramatic. And as well as that, how they, um, what's the word I was going to say, how they assimilated into Australian culture. But other than that, um, the challenges with that and how they're sort of blooming now too. Absolutely beautiful. Like they give you recommendations for films during this whole, um, this whole doco and all of them look really good. They even shout out the, uh, Un-Indian with Brett Lee in there as well. Brett Lee? Yeah. yeah. Brett Threw Lee me off. The director of, of this directed that movie. Yeah, Anu- Anupam Sharma? Hmm. Dire- he directed both. Yeah, but he was critical during that time of getting those Indian crews over here to Australia to shoot. What was Nobody what? shoots like those O's. No, and it's it's crazy, right? Because the output that they have is amazing. But these O's operate almost gorilla like They said they would just grab a, a, a van in, like, Switzerland or something. Oh, that mountain looks good. Pull over to the side of the road here, and they just do a full number. Amazing. You know how they're just whipping their artists if <clears throat> they don't know the moves? <laughs> <laughs> And it's okay. wild too because it's not even one time they'll stop the van. They're stopping their van like three, four times on that road. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and no one's stopping them. They're just going for it. Yeah. the The idea of Bollywood um, then was a window into the world, mm. so they didn't want to see the streets and like the the alleys and slums and and their own surroundings. They've seen that. They, mm. they wanted actual escapism Mm. so like they they wanted to see the mountains of switzerland paris and then eventually coming to australia right and the issues there were crazy the like you're you're almost thinking um like it's 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 at a time when these guys are sort of i roll 40 deep Basically, when I make movies, a Bollywood movie is not a lean crew. No, no. They're having a party, you know what I mean? You need your hype men. You need people there to kind of create an atmosphere. And these guys is like, like it's, it's not unheard of to have a guy holding on an umbrella or a guy that's job is just to make the chai. Mm. And when you translate that to Australia... They're they're questioning why would you need a why would you need to give a guy a job just to hold an umbrella? Mm. But actually, he's a production assistant, right? Or like, why would you get a guy to to make chai all the time when we've got people that make tea over here? And you see him make the tea. They're it's just squeezing done. the tea bag out. You know what I mean? It's not chai. It's not the care that 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 the actual chai wallers actually take over in India. It's not tea, <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I've still got to. I've still got to try chai. There's a lot in this movie that sort of got me curious and excited about Indian culture and Indian cinema. Yeah, so much so that that night I threw on Triple R. Mm. And when I tell you that Triple R is a, a a live action manga that One Piece and Cowboy Bebop could never. <laughs> There was a sequence in there that, like, like it was, it was better than some of the, the Marvel stuff that we've had so far. The production values is insane. There's it's a, not. Lot, a lot that's better than the Marvel stuff. 
Oh yeah, a hundred percent. But you wouldn't expect it from like an Indian movie with singing and dancing, right? Would compete on the scale of a Marvel movie. It is nuts. Yeah. It's amazing. And it was it was entertaining. And exactly like the documentary said, you've got a like it's otherworldly. It's not realism. Hmm. That's why you can have the those like fighting tigers or um beating up a thousand people to get his one man and then Ooh. drag him all the way back. Nuts. Yeah. I think like with a lot of the, the stuff you see in here as well, it makes a lot of external films make a lot of sense as well. Like <clears throat> it clicked like shortly after today that what they say in inception makes a lot more sense now as well when they're in India and they, they're testing out the dreaming agent and that guy comes over and he's like, people don't come here to dream. They come here to wake up. Mm. And that's like a short sentence to describe how the citizens or anyone within India were using film back in there as well. Cause it was all escapist theory. Basically they wanted to go there to think about yeah. something else. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it was such a good documentary. And to be honest, like, cause I don't know much about Indian cinema. I don't know much about Bollywood. This was, it was such a good education actually watching it. Mm. It got me interested in it. Let me tell you this. Bollywood does it right. Like all of their movies is three hour movies with a 20 minute intermission in the middle. Yeah. And when you walk out, you go get hot food, samosas, whatever you need, cold drink, another beer, popcorn. Go to the toilet. Tell me, Tell Mr. Him. Scorsese, does this not sound great? You know what I mean? It like <laughs> to me. It does. It really, really does. I'm telling you, like, if I got the 20 minute intermission, you know what would be perfect for? You know, you know, before like you need to like go to the bathroom and then you're like, you know what? I can save it. And then midway through that movie, you're like, I got to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> When you I don't set want to it miss off out on there. anything. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I was watching Triple R, they had the intermission. Beautiful. Wipe yourself off and <laughs> <laughs> it was nuts. I, I I really enjoyed the documentary. It is a cool 90 minutes. But it covers so much. It's it moves at a click mm. that like you you don't you don't sort of they don't squander the time anywhere it's sharp mm. it's precise and it it gets its points across mm. and then it delves into some of the 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 more disheartening stuff like australia's making all this money off these indian films through tourism and through um indians migrating over here thousand percent but it's the tourism branch that's that's negotiating with the film branch in india Mm. It's not film Australia trying to trying to work with with film India, mm. and then talks just broke down um, when some Indian um, migrants were getting assaulted and and also killed mm. in Melbourne, and there was protests and and all these things, and it just it just let India know that we're not welcome there. And for yeah. them, their response was, well, I'm not going to showcase your city here. Be like the tourism went up like crazy. And I, I got to say as well, like these guys knew how to barter as well when it came to showcasing the beauty of any location they went into. Like if they had to like have those talks with government and government telling them you can't shoot here, here and here, they would be very forward with the fact that, look, I want to shoot here, but I want to see the best parts of this so I can show everyone else the best parts of this. Yeah. It's, it's exactly. just really compelling. <laughs> yeah. So what happens yeah. when, when government gets involved in the film, mm. last time that happened, it was the fucking Nazis. Oh, I'm true. sure what came out of there. Disgusting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, they, they, they still make propaganda films now. It's just like it's backed by the military and everything. It is... Oh, yeah. But they should never be never be involved. Mm. Yeah. 
They kill. Government kills creativity. You know what? I would like to spend a weekend in North Korea watching Kim Jong Un's personal collection. What do you mean? Kim Jong Un's got Netflix. It's the rest <laughs> of the people's that you got. You got to worry about. I don't. Know, but his personal collection. I want to see his top five, his top four letterbox. <laughs> North Korean made films. Kim, Kim Jong is probably just all proms. Oh, <laughs> tell you. You know what? Give it like four or five years, we might see Kim Jong Un visits the Criterion uh, closet or whatever it is where they pick the movies. <laughs> Wild that Criterion closet. Yeah. Like, Especially the everything. older stuff. Those are just grab handfuls, just armfuls, and we can pick all of these. That's a shelf, sir. <laughs> You just torture. That's the shelf saying, what are you going to do? Stop me. <laughs> Fill the bags. <laughs> That's what it would be. Why has this got the blick in the criteria <laughs> closet? <laughs> Doubles of every copy. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, this movie is absolutely worth a watch. It is available now in um, uh, certain locations. To check it out, but it is also available exclusively as part of Dendy's uh, Bollywood Film Festival that's happening, that's running from the 2nd of November to the 5th of November. So hmm. If you're out there, you want to learn a bit more, you're curious about it, go check it out. Beautiful stuff. Does Event, event doesn't do those Bollywood events anymore? Uh, they uh, There's a lot of times where they will just run the movie. No. Oh. But my friend was telling me at work, because I was asking him, right? Hmm. He was like, if you're going to go see an Indian film, right, you'll have to pick out of five or six sessions because they dub them in all the languages. Mm. Yeah. So, for instance, like Triple R is Hindi, right? But yeah. Then, and that's, that's from the south of India. But then you might get uh, a movie that's um, Tamil. Yeah. Yeah, or, or one of the other languages. There. Yeah, the other dialects, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's why everyone speaks English over there. They're like, "Fuck it." <laughs> <laughs> but it, but over there, they were saying in this doco, they have state cinemas. So imagine having the cinema of New South Wales, or the cinema of Sydney, mm. or the cinema of Queensland, where like two and a half thousand people go and they watch the same movie. Oh, right. that'd be so mad. Yeah. Can you imagine screening, like, something funny there and just hearing the laugh, like, just start at, at one end or something and then come all the way around? You yeah. would just be feeling everything in the cinema. And through the, the, the sort of the doco and the scope, um, it kind of it loops back to what this O says at the start of the movie where Indians, like... We laugh loud, Mm. we hug like big (laughs) and we like, you know, we talk, um, we talk big and, and like their emotions are all out there. So they want to see that reflected in the cinema. And I think this movie captured, this doco captures it perfectly. Anupam and the team behind it did an amazing job and it's, it's absolutely worth checking out. Like I didn't, I was not interested in Bollywood films before because I feel like with art you need a curator. You need Mm. someone to curate Mm. that experience and this helped with that. Absolutely. Now I've got like mad interest in there. (laughs) I want to check them all out. Yeah, same. Definitely curious. But no, I love this. From start to finish, like there's nothing else I can really say to compliment this because it's just the highest honors for me. I really enjoyed this van. It was good. I reckon you could probably take one of those Bollywood directors and give them like an Avengers script and the budget and they'll get it done in two weeks. Mate. They'll just sit there and wait for special effects to get done, but they'll get it done in two weeks. (laughs) Yeah, true. It'd look amazing. Mm. That's what I thought they were going for with like the, the look of Blue Beetle and all that sort of stuff is like that really flashy Bollywood sort of look, that money Bollywood look. Huh. Not really. Yeah. 
I would have liked to have seen something similar to like Miss Marvel. Yeah. Or um, more of drab that show. Or <laughs> I suppose they are in Jersey though. Who gives a fuck? They were still going to the things. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But then I think about like Kingo in Eternals as well. Mm. Like those sequences were cool. The like like they didn't they didn't hold on to that. It wasn't yeah. part of his identity or anything. Mm. Except when it was part of his identity to explain why he was as old mm. as he was. Like I laughed, there was this video and um all it said was nah they did her dirty and it's just the chick this Indian chick, and she just breaks down crying, and she's like, ah, 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 and then they just start playing the Bollywood movie music over it. <laughs> That's bad. Man. They did it in the studio. They just laughed at this chick. It was hilarious. That's bad, man. <laughs> but yeah, shall we get stuck into the killer? The killer? Yes. Let's do it. Let's get it. <laughs> so actually yeah we, we could not swear on this episode and we were, we were reviewing a movie called the killer we'd literally have to call it the unaliver if we wanted to get one <laughs> <laughs> the reverse soft, soft cock energy yeah <laughs> can tell you got sc energy <laughs> <laughs> like that beat is hard <laughs> exactly <laughs> But now, so jumping into synopsis, so Michael Fassbender plays as the killer. Dealing with the consequence of a botched job in Paris, he soon comes to the conclusion that he must not mess up his next job, which, which is to track down his employers and those who wronged him. So David Finch has done it once again, and he hasn't given anyone titles. So we have Michael Fassbender as the killer, Tilda Swinton as the expert, Charles Parnell as the lawyer, Arliss Howard as the client, Sala Baker, you were right, big dog, as the brute, uh, Andre Hules as the target, and Monique Ganderton as the dominatrix. Hmm. All right, so let's jump into our technical breakdown there. So it runs 158 minutes. It's a cool two-hour movie. It felt like it was three minutes, to be honest. Um, sound mix has been mixed in Dolby Digital and Dolby Atmos, so we'll check that out when it comes through on uh, and Netflix on the tenth. The tenth, yeah. It's got a two point three nine aspect ratio. Um, they use Red V Raptor ST cameras. These are the brand new cam cameras. These are the Cubans. These are the eight Ks. <laughs> this is an ama amazing camera. Yeah, and then they use lights. Um, Sumilux C lenses. So what did I see that used? There's a whole lot of new stuff um, and a whole lot of old stuff, I think, as well. Um, Stranger Things, stuff like that, use those same okay. lenses. They just didn't yep. use that same camera. This yeah. is brand new. Like, this Finch is, is up on that. He's up uh, on all the red. Like, red make the cameras for Finch. Yeah. The yeah. Finch is like, asked for this. Yeah, and told them, streamline it more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so the dailies were done by Photochem Next Lab. So it looks like there was, it's weird because it, I don't know if you shot in film or if you shot digital, but Fincher likes to shoot digital these days. He hates the film. Um, so Light Eye in Los Angeles did the digital intermediate. Um, it is a... I think it's a 4K digital intermediate. The movie was shot upwards of 8K. Looked it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looked amazing. Um, so it was in Red Code Raw, negative format. So I'm pretty sure that's just the actual digital hard drive, essentially. Hmm. Yeah, so it was shot in Dolby Vision as well. Um, the source format is 8K. We just said that. Um, the intermediate was 4K. So it's going to look just next level. Um, Criterion, we're looking at you. We want a 4K release of this. And it was shot in something called Spherical. The cinema, cinema to graphic process. Spherical okay. source format. I have no idea what that is. Um, printed film format is in D Cinema. It's in DCP um, package, and it's in UHD as well. 
Yeah. So this is going to look great. The movie already yeah. looks great. It looked good on the, on, on the screen that we saw. The only thing that really bugged me is that they, it, it looked like Netflix. They were playing the Netflix screen. Yeah. And that frame, the 2.3 by 9 aspect ratio, didn't fill up the full screen. Mm. They didn't even move the curtains, nothing, or open, <laughs> like widen the curtain, nothing. <laughs> Well, for some reason, Netflix has a different aspect ratio. It says two point two by three nine there, but it's a different aspect ratio. It's nearly two two four one by one. It's just a little bit bigger than normal. Like when you see a Netflix full screen as well, it doesn't go full screen. No, it doesn't. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's just a, a bit off. Yeah, but there is the one point eight five, which is a bit smaller, and then there's the one point eight seven, yes, by one, which is yeah, a bit yeah. bigger. Yeah, just a bit bigger. You can notice it. Nice. With um, spherical lenses, it's just your standard camera lens, so the mm. spherical shape to it. Whereas anamorphic, when they shoot because it's flat, it comes out looking stretched, and you have to de-squeeze it to get your original uh, picture. Mm. So he wasn't using square. He wasn't using the the cutout things in there then. No, no. this was probably just, just like straight spherical lens. That's wild. Yeah, probably gives it a nice look actually. A nice I little want... warped look on the edges. Hmm. But I want. I wonder if it was for the dimensionality as well, mm. for the locations and stuff. All right. So the question everybody wants to know, is it worth the price of the subscription and also the price of admission in our case? Because we actually went out to the cinemas and paid. I say fucking oath. Yes. Yes, it is. Yep. It's a resounding yes for me. Seeing Fincher on, on the big screen again is amazing. Mm. The man is just a master of it's like sort of, he he presents a really really cold world, but fills it with these things and these actions that the the characters have to do, and it just it makes it engaging. Hmm. Any other this this could have been the plot of of a TV show or any other any other movie, and it would have fallen flat. But he keeps it right there, engaging. No fat on this at all. No. And that was the other thing is that it was so refreshing to see a movie sub two hours. Oh man! In the cinema. Oh. After two weeks ago, Killers of the Fly, kill, Killers mm, of yeah. the Moon, my God. Like, watching this was, was, it was like, you know. Yeah. Unless I've got an intermission. <laughs> you turn yeah. that fucking aircon on. That's what they need. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For me, it's a, uh, yeah. Yes, for both subscription as well as admission. If you got to watch this in that limited run on a theatrical release, I think we should consider ourselves lucky to see something of this caliber on the big screen as well, because yep. just seeing this like on a Netflix on your TV at home won't do it justice. If you've seen it on that screen, this was brilliant from start to finish. Like there's no other way to put it. Like this is beautiful. So good. Yep. All right. Y'all want to get into some spoilers. Mm. Yeah. All right. What worked for you, for you as so for me, it was the fact that there's a lot of talking from Fassbender in this movie. And with how meticulous he is, you can expect it to be very, uh, I guess, like intellectually <laughs> sounding. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but his exposition wasn't boring. Um, and he kept things that were very specific, very simple as well. So it felt like you could relate to him. Really enjoyed that. Um, and the other part was just the pacing. Like with this film, because it had that 80s, 90s action movie feel, it was just straight to the point, start to finish. Like there wasn't any um, epilogue at the end of this movie. It just finished. And I really like that. Mm. Yeah. The voiceover, man. Voiceover, like just made it for me. I love the voiceover. It made me feel like Patrick Bateman got caught and they recruited him to go kill people like for real like that's what it felt like that those opening moments of um of american psycho where mm -hmm. he's 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 talking and it's a lot of talking that 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 um what's it called 
that monologue is massive when you think about it. it's the first seven minutes of the movie is just mm. him talking but the fact that they he he's doing something in the scene mm. like just makes it you, you don't even think about the talking you hear the talking you understand what he's saying but you're still watching him do what he does yeah 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 it was just great and it just moved Fuck, i was glad it, like it just moved like that hit happens boom eight minutes and then boom, we're on the fucking run now. And then boom, we, we're back and we're, we're in the fucking DR. And then I'm investigating and then I'm killing. And then like, it just moved, man. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's yeah. weird to see Fincher move so fast through, through a movie. I yeah. think this is the shortest movie. I think Alien 3 might be 157. Something like, I don't know if the game is also sub two hours or the, just on two hours. Just on two hours, yeah. Yeah. 203, 204, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Alien 3 is one. For- yeah, that length worked as well. Mm. I wasn't fucking around. No. I'm not, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not looking to give you exposition out your ass and, no. like, just, just to pat out a scene. It yeah. was lean. It was focused. Exactly the, like the killer. Yeah, it's this yes. is where we're at right now, and this and and you need to fucking figure it out. So figure yeah. it out, and you got to do it quick. Yeah, loved it. I think what what worked for me was this detachment that the killer has. Mm. There's a detachment necessary to do the work that you need to do. Mm. You cannot enjoy the. Um, the pleasures of life, the luxuries of life without putting in the work. He self-described, I've put in my 10,000 hours. I know exactly what's going to happen. I'm prepared for this. I prepared for my entry. I prepared for my exit. And you see it all unfold on screen. Beautiful. And what was beautiful is that he tells you his rules. Yeah. Right. But when he executes, it's different. It's, it's the rules essentially. Yeah but he shows you why he's the best. Mm. And I, I really resonated with that. And it's funny because it's not a character that should be likable. You're not supposed to identify with a, a like a, a killer, it's like a, an killer. assassin. You're, you're not supposed to be like, I see things in my day-to-day life that this guy um, sort of talks about. Mm. And yeah, I mean, that, that was amazing in itself that Fincher could sort of put a whole, wrap a whole movie around this guy, not give you anything about his character. Mm. There's no character work in this. Zero. Yeah. hundred percent. You love the precision, the surgical nature of this man because he's so good at what he does. Mm. And then you're just like, like, I, I could watch more of that character. So could I. Just yes. because. He says what he's going to do, and then he fucking del- yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then executes. Yeah. yeah. I like um, Fassbender's delivery has always been really good. Like, in whatever role he plays with this, like, you get the undertones that there's layers to those words mm-hmm. because they go from being rules to be words of affirmation, things like that. So like you said, 10,000 hours. And he's definitely like just created this, this, uh, this setup. So he just doesn't mess it up. Cause when he does mess it up, you see it. Cause when he starts yep. saying those words and he cuts himself off, you can see the emotional side finally, like not erupting, but slowly leaking out of this man pause. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also the, um, the Smith's song, uh, yeah. As soon as now. So I like that's the theme song for Charmed, right? Charmed, yeah. But that was the Love Spit Love one. Mm. That they they did like a they did a cover of it for Charmed. But the Smiths did the original in eighty four, which is the same year mm. Fincher directed his first music video, right? Yeah, my man. Which is and that just hit for an hour. <laughs> what is this like? Is Fincher a big charmed fan? Like, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> so, 
it's the um it's the second smith song that they play in this movie as well because yeah. um funnily enough Big smith soundtrack <laughs> yeah that's what i was gonna say too this might be the first fincher movie where you did the intro straight from the beginning straight from zero seconds there's the intro for the killer yeah also shout out to the old ipods man <laughs> big time um all right what didn't what didn't work for you o's no. so like outside of nitpicking i had no issues with this film i thought because of like how lean this movie is and how straight to the point i couldn't find anything to sort of pick at during there's little things that I could pick at, right? <laughs> like the yeah. brute could have just destroyed the killer, but we're, we're rooting for the guy. So we don't give a shit at mm. that point he's put in the fucking work. We, what he says, he's done his 10,000 hours. You believe he can take that hit. Yeah. But it was just a fight around the house. That was just a bit awkward. You've never seen a Fincher fight scene. When has there ever been a Fincher fight scene that was that technical ever? Never. No, he's he's never done it. Ooh, certain certain aspects of Fight Club, you could say, but true. And there's bits of girl with the dragon tattoo where she's kind of fighting the guy on the escalator, but not to this level. No, no. So I I think Fincher could probably get better at that. The photography at the end of it was beautiful, though. The brutality mm. that he fucking unleashes on the brute. It was beautiful. All the hard-hitting shit was there. That's my only nitpick, though. I can't tear this movie apart. Is what's his face worked with the old Fincher before? <laughs> the goat cinematographer. Ah, uh, Deke. Yeah. Did he shoot what's his face Social Network? He didn't. Uh, eh? No, he didn't. Is that Greg Fraser? No, it's the same guy that shot Fight Club. He's worked with him for years mm. up until that point. It's just, it's the same O, but it's not, yeah, it's not Greg Fraser either. You'd think that with Fincher's love for like digital photography that he would, he would have mm. worked with the old Fincher before. Yeah. Jeff Cronenworth. Yeah. Jeff Cronenworth. Cronenworth. Yeah. I think if Fincher were to go back and do any movie with the Deke, mm. it's Roger Deakins for anyone out there, so, with the Deke, it would be Benjamin Button. Yeah. That'd be the movie that would just be amazing. Mm. Yeah, that's true. Also, Panic Room is his shortest movie. Yeah. Um, it's it is his shortest movie. Yeah. Panic Room fucking moves. Mate. I still haven't watched it. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> what? I, I've watched... I haven't watched Alien 3 and I haven't watched Panic Room. Those are the two Fincher movies I've never watched. Panic Room fucking moves. We saw that how many times at the movies? Twice. I think twice, yeah. But Panic Room, it was a shame with Panic Room, even though it's one of Finch's biggest hits, but it, it kind of got overshadowed by Spider-Man that year. Yeah, it did. But what's bad is that he was supposed to direct Spider-Man that year. He was. Shit. Yeah, he was like, I don't want to do that fucking... I don't <laughs> hate that fucking origin story. <laughs> He would have done well now. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, I, I, I can't nitpick the movie. Same. Like, it was just a great experience. Hmm. Yeah. I think there was so little fat on there that you couldn't. Yeah. Like, it's hard purpose. hitting. Yeah. It's hard hitting. It's fucking brutal. It's, it's to the point. Hmm. Yeah. It also, like, I think they, they shied away from having any form of, like, real conversation in this movie because of Michael Fassbender. Because you notice every time he gets into a conversation, he already leads with emotion. Mm. Like, you see it when um, the girl's all beaten up in the hospital and he speaks to her brother, I think. Yeah. yeah. And it goes straight to, I will make this right, I promise. And then with Tilda Swinton, yep. he's trying to hold it back. And that's when the words come up again and then he cuts it and it's just like obviously the biggest clinic gets put on by Tilda Swinton, but yeah, really, really good. Yeah. Mm. All right. What was the moment that you realized that you either liked in this case we loved the fucking movie, right? <laughs> well what was that point for you, Oz? For me it was when um the Paris job gets fucked up. 
So it seems like he already had a contingency set up. And if he didn't, he thought really fast and he made his move to get out of there. And with that, the intricacies of how he disposes of the evidence as well was crazy. And he scrubs himself off, he shaves, he gets everything done within this like allotted time. And then he's already moving. Yeah, I like that as well, man. That that sequence was was like amazing because mm. I didn't know where it was going to go after that. I thought it was he was just going to outrun the cops and it was going to go into like a car chase or whatnot. But it, that was like his plan B that he had just thought out and executed. Um, so, um, the, the 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 way that he approaches his work for me was what what got me straight away. Like just he's just surgical, yeah. And it's no emotion. It's got nothing to do with feelings. This is just a job. This is just a job. That's all we're doing. Mm. Yeah. I don't care about the target. I don't care about who he's with. I don't care. I don't care about his political views. None of that bullshit. It's mm. just a target. Yeah. I think what was surprising as well was, you know, when he goes to that law firm mm. and then the chick's like, hey, like, do this right and I'll give you everything that you need. He's like, all yeah. right. And then I thought, okay, shit, he's faulting on his rules. This is where, this is the point in the story where the hitman always like fucks up and yeah. gonna come around and bite him in the ass. But the way that he sort of does it where she didn't get brutally killed it's like she she had an accident. Yeah. Which is right in his wheelhouse. Like he's known for that sort of shit. Had yeah. an accident falling down the stairs so her kids can get her life insurance. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. It's like that act, you don't expect to to find humanity in that. Mm. But that little bit of leniency, I know mm. that's it's it's such a callous way of kind of looking at the situation. Mm. But mm. in his mind, that made sense, and that that was sort of like the the compromise that he could come to. Mm. Yeah, yeah. For me, I I really started enjoying the movie. I think um, once he he kind of got to. New Orleans, mm. and I I seen him execute that job start to finish from mm. the preparedness in that locker, which is a wild locker. <laughs> He's prepared for everything. Yeah, from there, and then him executing that and nail gunning the um the laptops to the desk, like yeah. him him sort of thinking through making the mistake with the guy and and um nail gunning that guy's chest warlock from uh top gun maverick it was warlock yeah um and the, and then the execution of that job that was when i i i fully realized okay like, this is the sort of movie that we're in for mm. and from the paris job i thought it was going to be a i'm on the run i'm on the back foot yeah but actually, it was the opposite. It was like, I'm in my element, I'm going to execute the job, and yeah. I'm still going to stick to my tenets. Yeah. Locked, loaded, hunting your ass down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I loved it. Honestly, start to finish, this was fucking beautiful, man. Mm. So good. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I agree. There's... It's not a movie that is flashy. Mm. And like it's it seemed like it was quite low budget in terms of how much action was actually in there. But I there's think still that a lot of action in there. Oh yeah, there's he, there's heaps of action. Not not heaps of action, but there's enough action to keep you entertained when you needed it. Yeah. I don't need yeah. OD action. It's just different types of action. Yeah. yeah. I don't a... even know if you Call it action, you know what I mean? It's it's a Fincher amount of action. Thriller. It's thriller. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it just, it just worked on, on so many levels. And it was the simplicity of the movie that kind of that got me in. Mm. I mean, I, I, I dig that sort of shit. But I think, and 
like, you know, it's just, just my thesis or whatnot, that there's a lot of subtext and um, esoteric shit that Finch has put below the surface so that, that people can sort of look back and, and um, sort of glean a little bit more meaning from. I will post my, I won't go, go into it now because I, I wrote a little bit, but uh, I'll, I'll chuck that up on Instagram or something like that. A little, little bit of my sketchbook there. Mm. For anyone keen and mean. <laughs> <laughs> like it's lazy. <laughs> um, yeah, that is it. Check the killer out on Netflix from November 10th. Unfortunately, I think that the theatrical run has now ended. Mm. Netflix don't run that shit longer than a week. They, they need to stop doing that bullshit. If it's in the can, if the film is in the can, just screen it. Mate, if Rebel Moon can screen at a VMAX, that's the experience that I want. Fucking I don't gosh. really want to watch it at home. Even though it'd sound mad and look mad and everything, mm. it's not going to be that epic sort of setting. We need that shit. I need a VMAX. I need a proper, like, large screen yeah. format. VMAX. Fucking. Mate. Fuck it. <laughs> so, just quickly, I just want to add in that The Killer is available until the 8th of November at George Street for mm. anyone that's in New South Wales, so or Sydney, I should say. So, if you get Very the chance, good. check it out, please. It's definitely worth, uh, like, a cinema uh, viewing like Which means regardless oh, yeah. of the cinema type as well. Which means it's probably still still screening in the US then. I think they'll they'll keep it going until because the eighth, which means it's two days until Netflix re- Netflix release. So it's yeah, because time. I think what is what is coming out the eighth? Uh, uh, Miss Marvel, Cat yes. Marvel two, the Marvels. Yeah, <laughs> eventually got there. we got there. <laughs> Yeah, I think that comes out that week. So yeah, yeah the tenth, the tenth that drops. Yeah, this is getting ready tomorrow. Sly documentary, man. Mate, I didn't know that. Yeah, the third. Might have to do like an episode of that and an episode of Arnie and just watch it. Like I don't know. I, Sly is, I think, one continuous documentary. I'm hoping it's a it's a whole bunch of episodes. <laughs> so he, he just posted on IG. And he said, like, you know, get your guys all to watch. And, like, it's, it felt like it's, it's taken a lifetime to make because it's my life. So, so you, wa- you watching that this weekend? Of course. Put it on the list then. Is get it, it done there, Doc? I don't know, but I'm saying the stuff to, like, actually talk, oh, talk yeah, about yeah. on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Get it done. Mm. As I watch that, Invincible. This weekend as well. Shit. <laughs> Gotta watch that full first season. Season three, we'll get this. Um, what else comes out this week? I think that's it. Goosebumps is wrapping up for anyone that, that wants to watch that. I think Loki's... Is Loki wrapping up? Because I've seen all, like two episodes two. left. Two more. It's two more left. So it's a seven episode season. Yeah, I think they extended it. Just... Or did we watch just watch episode four? We watched episode four. Okay, I was wrong, completely wrong. (laughs) Yeah, because the the trailer's out for the next two episodes. I haven't watched them. Yeah, I don't watch the trailers. Yeah, it's going cold, you know what I mean? Pause. Gen V also finishes up? Shit. Yep. Um, And then the boys doesn't start until next year. Yeah. If that. Yeah, if that. We'll see. See if Butcher's got blonde hair because he is playing Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's kind of everything this Sunday. Mm. So make sure everyone tunes in and have a banger fucking show. Lots to talk about. I really want to watch that sly. Mm. That just looks like the type of show that I would cry in, or the type right, of you, you know, I cry in. No, I'm crying. You know, I'm crying. It's sly, it's still out. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, check in with us then. Follow us on all social media, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, Threads. Goddamn, what else? We got it all, baby. Yeah, we're there. 
it was worth checking out. We're there. X. Damn it. X. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah. YouTube, give us a like and a subscribe. Helps us get in more spaces, get that content, bring it back to you. We've got some beautiful screeners on the way. Mm. We're talking like uh, uh, Thanksgiving. Cat Ooh. person. We've got Napoleon. We've got Anatomy of a Fall. We've got Priscilla. We've got all sorts of shit. Mm. This is a place that you want to be, motherfuckers. Subscribe now. <laughs> book your seats, please. Book your seats. Allocated seating, everyone. Allocated seating. <laughs> um, yeah. Love yourself. Love movies. Vape more, smoke less, and wash your ass. Take it sleazy.